Welcome back, friends. Thanks for being here. This is Steve, KM9G. I am a ham radio operator and a vintage computer enthusiast. If you're new to the channel, I do ham radio videos and vintage computer videos. That's why I just said that thing that I said. Anyway, this month is Sep Tandy, and we are doing Tandy product reviews and praise and love, and uh, all things Tandy are pretty awesome. Last year, Septandy was a big hit, and when I was at a yard sale 11 months ago, I found, wait for it, check out my shelf of cool things. I found this thing, and it is a Tandy WP2. Let's get over to the bench and check it out. Oh, and uh, be sure to do all that stuff down below the belt. Um, like, comment, subscribe, join, ring the bell, leave... Uh, Leave all kinds of fancy stuff, and uh, we'll see you after the break. All right, so this thing here appears to have come from an old school. This is a, uh, a protective case, which is basically a piece of imitation leather. Get that out of the way. This came from an old school in the area. What does it say? It says Sherwood School, December 1992. So that makes this the newest, newest, newest 8-bit computer I have. The warranty expires 11-26-1994, so nothing to worry about that. It is uh, requiring 6 volts DC at 200 milliamps, which isn't a whole heck of a lot, which is how you can get away with powering it with a couple of AA batteries. Um, thing works pretty good off of AA batteries. It is missing the battery door for the memory backup, but we will be okay. Oh, and one of the feet, too. And I don't know if you can pick this up on camera or not, but it's it's a little uh, it's a little loved. But that's okay. It still works out pretty well. It has these handy dandy little feet on the back side here, like a regular keyboard might have. And while we've got it up there, we'll show you the ports on the back. Uh, six volts in, cassette port, printer port. I understand this to be a Centronics compatible printer port, so you'd be able to hook up any regular old off-the-shelf ASCII printer. And an RS-232C port. Um, this thing will dial a modem or it will um, just connect straight up to a terminal and it is also compatible with the Tandy portable floppy disk drives. This thing has an 80 column 8 row display. It is an excellent distraction free word processor because that's kind of all it can do is word processing. So that makes this thing an excellent cyber deck. Um, what else can we do with this thing? Oh, on this side, let's show you the sides of it. There is a contrast wheel and there is a protect on off switch. So the protect on portion uses the battery to keep the contents of the files stored in memory. And when you turn it off, it wipes out all of the RAM and stops that function from happening. And then on this side is a memory expansion port, memory expansion slot. And those are extremely rare, extremely hard to find. So not only is this the newest 8-bit micro that I have in my collection currently, it is also the fastest. This thing is running a 5.5 megahertz Z80 processor. Um, so it would be pretty cool to do a lot of Z80 type things on it. And uh, it's just not really all that possible because it wasn't designed to do that. I think the only way you could do that would be to write a custom ROM and go from there. And that is beyond my abilities, but maybe one of you people out there can do it. These things are still for sale on eBay, and they're pretty darn durable, so I'd, I'd have a high degree of confidence that you'd find them one that would actually work. Um, so what am I gonna do with it? I'm gonna turn it on, it makes a nice beeping sound, and it's gonna blink a little bit. Let's see if I can help you guys out with seeing what's on that screen. Yeah, it's gonna blink because it's giving me a low backup battery warning, and it will just blink nonstop until I put a backup battery in it, and I don't have one. It always starts up in this um, word processor mode asking you for a new file name, and there's nothing you can do to get out of that that I've found. Um, the function keys F1, F2 rely on pressing F1 and then one of these buttons up here to activate help, find, quick, I don't know what quick does, format, style, spell word, it's got a built-in dictionary, synonym, it's got a built-in thesaurus, Dial is a, um, I think it actually will dial the phone for you if you have a modem plugged into it. Select, copy, cut, paste is all of the things that you would do to copy, cut, paste, and select text. That works out really well. Um, status, when we get into it, let's see if I just give it a file name of test. We'll do status, oh, F2 status. 
and I turn status on and off and it's telling me that it has 21,183 bytes of free memory so this is probably a 32k machine with a couple of documents on it somewhere let's try see if there's any files files from memory there's a test document files from the RAM disk no files files from the memory card there's no memory card files from the diskette there's no diskette files from the tape and there's no tape let's retrieve that test document from memory and what you know there's nothing in there the keyboard is actually a pretty nice keyboard the key travel to me is a little narrow so I find it to be just a little different than normal typing but I got used to it pretty quick this is a test sentence that works out really well so let's see what we can do the only thing I can think of to do with this is to bring it into the modern era I have a FTDI USB to serial cable and that is right here let's plug that into the serial port and I have a Raspberry Pi hiding in the background with that Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen let's get zoomed in on the screen a little bit so we can see what's going on on the screen itself in a little bit better detail okay now that we can see the screen a little bit better I restarted the machine and got us right back to the opening prompt where it's asking us for a new file name you can see some copyright messages up top here uh, copyright 1989 citizen watch company limited copyright 1989 something good Inc. version 1.62 copyright 1989 microlytics ufo xerox version 4.7 new file name test and it brings us straight in and it's got the status on so I'm going to turn the status off I'm going to type in a few lines of text all right and then I'm going to go into setup and get it set up to connect to the Raspberry Pi so go down to Telcom, and I want to change that to RS-232C. I want to change the speed to 9600. 8 bits of data, no parity, one stop bit, enable hardware flow control, turn echo off, set duplex to full. That takes us back to the word processor, so there's a little bit of multitasking going on there. Let's go into Telcom, and it says RS-232C is ready, and that is my Raspberry Pi login prompt. I've called this machine ham clock, that's for an upcoming video. And let's log in. And there we go. Let's try doing something that uh, everybody should do with an older computer, with a retro computer, with a retro battle station, if you will. Telnet to bbs.foztex.com. And check in over at the retro battle stations, BBS. And let's go in as a visitor. Terminal size is 80 by 8. Let's see what it does with that. Terminal type VT102. We'll just pick that because it's not going to know. The Tandy's not going to know what a VT102 is. Character set is ASCII. Welcome to the new Level 29 BBS. The official BBS of RetroBattleStations.com. Running on an iWill K266 Plus KT133A with AMD Duron at 1 GHz and 1 GB of RAM. And it looks like it's doing pretty good on the eight lines of text. You are caller number 90, connected at 9600 BPS. I think that's just uh, faking it. Most active dial-up accounts this month. Mufasa has been the most active with 13 calls. And let's see if there's any external services. I can send a tweet or I can quit. And it's gonna want my user account to send a tweet and I'm not giving you my user account. Actually I am, it's Kilo Mike 9 golf Let's log off. Yes, I want to really log off. And it says goodbye. All right, so to tie this into amateur radio, the other thing that we can do is check out the DX cluster. Let me get the Telnet address for that real quick. All right, Telnet to dxc.n9bc.com on port 7300. And it wants to know a login. You log in with your call sign. Mine is Kilo Mike 9 Golf. And it will beep QDX from YT1DX on 30 meters and DX from F4CXO on 18090 and they heard it was heard by IS0HNN and this thing will basically just tell you all the DX cluster spots as they come in and for those of you that don't know what a DX cluster is when one ham radio operator hears another ham radio operator they can go to the DX cluster and they can say I heard this 
foreign distance station, DX for distance, uh, and my call sign is and their call sign is and a little comment. Um, and then everybody else will know that that can be heard. And then you just hit Q to log off. So if you're listening, if you're trying to find a rare station or a rare country on the air, you can tune into the DX cluster. And this is how all of the DX cluster websites interoperate with each other is through this backend Telnet DX Spider setup. It's a pretty cool little setup. Um, this one is run by a ham operator in Wisconsin with a call sign of N9BC. And you can go to uh, your favorite search engine and type in uh, DX Access Telnet Cluster and get a list of all of the Telnet Cluster servers that are out there. Let's see what else we can do with this thing. Oh, I see Zork. Nope, didn't like that. Hmm, it seems to be doing something. Go over on the Raspberry Pi and see what's happening. Fatal error cannot open story file. And that probably has to do with me typing it wrong. Let's try it again without using any fancy uh, terminal commands. All right, it loaded and it is trying to do some on-screen positioning, copyright infocom. There's a small mailbox here, field west of a white house. Yeah. We just don't have the terminal control for this. But I will link below in the description to a uh, person who has actually hacked into this device and gotten Zork to run. And uh, you can take a look at that. Well, that was pretty neat. Uh, I wasn't really sure what else I could do with this thing. Um, if, if you know what else you can do with this thing, let me know in a comment down below. But for now, I am going to take it over to uh, my nearest Starbucks and crank out the next best-selling novel. Thanks for being awesome.